Hello, welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 150. I am not alone, Binks just jumped on my lap when I started talking. Um, so yeah, we're here together. Uh, welcome everyone, welcome back to all returning viewers and welcome to all new viewers. I saw we have a few new subscribers, so thank you very much. Um, yeah. 150 episodes, my goodness. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, still not sick of it, so when I can, I will record, record a podcast. Right. Hi, Binks. Hi. I will start off with finished objects because I have two of them. I have managed to finish round one of the Super Sock World Championship. Uh, last time I showed you the qualifier that I only managed to finish in the nick of time. And this is round one, which I finished in less than a week. Um, these are Repeat After Me socks by Erika De Niet of Stitchy Designs. And um, they are a two color mosaic pattern. Um, yeah, they're not my favorite. <laughs> the fit is not the best. Uh, I made them for Robert because they were too wide for me. Just for comparison, the qualifier of the Super Stock World Championship was also a mosaic two color pattern. I used the same yarn. And those. I uh, started with 80 stitches. Okay, they had cables, uh, but also slipped stitches. Slip stitches make it less stretchy. So uh, I thought, well, let's go for the 72 stitch version. And um, yeah, they were too wide for me. I knit the first sock. Let Robert try them on and it looked like they may be two rounds too short. So then I started sock two. Sock one was finished in a weekend. So very quick and I saw how little people had finished. So I was like, okay, maybe I should try and make them longer socks. These are shorties with only 10 repeats. The minimum amount for maximum points was I think 13 repeats, so I was missing three. So I cast on number two. I was like, no, I'm gonna do shorties. I will stick with my idea. Where was I? <laughs> I got interrupted by Miss Leia. She wanted to be in a blanket fort instead of on the blanket fort and started to wreck the whole thing, like clawing her way inside something that doesn't exist. And meanwhile, just tearing up her whole blanket fort. Um, no clue why they can't have nice things. Freaking idiots. Um, this sock. I was talking about the minimum repeats for maximum points. Shorties just give one point. So I was like, no, I'm going to keep it shorties. It will never fit um, without the stretch. And this fits nicely over the foot and everything and over the heel. And the next morning I was like, oh, but if it's so quick, I can just frog it back. Mind you, I was done with the gusset decrease of uh, increases and um, yeah, basically frog back until the first repeat. And then added another repeat, made rubber try it on, did fit. So frog that repeat and did the whole gusset increase again. Um, by that time, I was very sick of these socks. And there was a lot of whining in my group about oh, 13 repeats is so long and 6 repeats is so long. There was for the high octane uh, design, it had 6 lace repeats. And then we get such long socks and we can't wear them. Um, I have big feet, so I always have to knit that much or more usually more, so I was so done with them. I was like, 
Jeez, get yourself together. You signed up for this. If you don't want it, you just get less points. It's easy. So, um, this sock was in timeout for a bit. But I managed and I finished them. This toe has two more rounds in it. Um, I then gave them to Robert to try them on to see how they were, if they were sagging or anything while he was wearing them. Basically, they're fine. I don't even have to add those two rows <laughs> in the other sock. And he's like, oh no, it's fine. He's just not wearing wool in summer because the, that's way too warm. Okay, that's your opinion. I don't mind. I totally uh, wear my woolen socks in summer, but I also wear slippers in summer and walk barefoot most of the time, so. Totally okay. Um, repeat after me socks by Stitchy Design. Already said that. I knit them on two and a half millimeter higher, higher sharps. And the yarn I used is the same as the yarn I used for the qualifiers, like I said. Um, were they the Campari socks? No, that was the warmer pattern. I don't remember the name of the qualifier. Very good. Um, doesn't matter. The yarn I used is Opal Surprise for the rainbow one and a Opal Solid in petrol for the main color. And I really like how they turned out. So another rainbow project done. This month only rainbow patterns allowed for pride month. Then another finished object because it is now the 27th of June and my test knit had a deadline for the 30th of June and while the sock was in timeout I managed to finish my test knit. My test knit is the These Mitts Parquetry by Victoria Marchant Knits or Designs and Designs. Well, Victoria Marchant. Um, her Instagram handle is down below in the subscription box. Description box? Hmm, what was it? At least it's in the show notes down below here if you scroll down. Um, and this is my version. This is one. And this is number two. Will you look at that? It is a rainbow in opposite directions. Like it ended there. So it started there and there. Um, I color matched the thumbs with where they were in the gradient. <laughs> I even took that extra step, so I'm very happy with how they turned out. Uh, they're a bit warm at the moment, but that is absolutely fine. Um, the yarn I used is a Schoppelwolle Zauberbau in Frische Fische. That is the rainbow gradient. And the other yarn I am not sure if it will show up, maybe a teeny tiny bit when I move around, um, maybe this side. It is a sparkle yarn, it is a chest of wool sparkly singles, silver sparkle singles or something. And um, the Schoppel Zauberbal is also singles yarn, so I thought it would be a nice match. So we have sparkle, we have rainbow. I think it's perfect for Pride Month. Um, I knit these on two and a half millimeter higher, higher, sharp. No, shall go interchangeables because I also had to go down a needle size for the ribbing. And uh, yeah, I am looking forward to wearing these. They are quite snug because I didn't do a gauge swatch and my gauge was a bit tighter on the color work. Oops. And I am hoping to be able to make a pair of socks in this pattern as well. I have an idea on how to do the increases for the gusset. Uh, it's interesting. I have to try some things out first. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to try that. Victoria told me she doesn't do socks, so 
I'll have to try that by myself. And I think that's all I wanted to say about these. Um, the pattern is coming out on July the 7th, I think. And then the last finished object. May I present to you <laughs> Luigi's new blanket. And because of course I finished a pair of socks for the Super Sock World Championship. So Luigi needed a new blanket. Look at him being smug. He's got a really big blanket now. He's very, very happy. Let me see. Yeah. You can see him there. Perfectly fine. Then my whip situation. Um, it's a bit of a sad situation. I cast on the skew socks and um, those were my very high on the queue list socks that I have been wanting to knit for ages but thought it would be too difficult or maybe they wouldn't fit me. At least I was very intimidated by this skew uh, idea and how it would be knit up. Um, then I saw Nora knit them, so I was like, okay, those go on my 1000 gram challenge um, by Zocke und Meer. Um, so I put the yarn in the basket, I made a whole queue of everything I wanted to knit and I had rainbow yarn for it planned. So I cast on this month. And here is sock number one. And maybe you can see it, it doesn't have a needle. I pulled the needle out. And for those of you who are afraid of stitches running away when you pull the needle out, yeah, maybe one or two have dropped down a little bit. Look at that. You can just put a needle in and pick them up again. It doesn't go that quickly. It only goes that quickly if you don't want it and don't expect it. Right? Um, so basically I have re-knit the whole gusset, increase and heel three times. And the first time the foot was too short, the whole two inches shorter than your foot length. Yeah, bullocks. Um, then it was really, really snug and just very uncomfortable because here is a line. Um, let me show it to you on the pattern. Maybe you can see it better that there is a line here from the uh, increases and it has zero stretch. And it's really, really uncomfortable and very tight. And also on my arch, it was super tight and uncomfortable. So I was like, okay, I'm done. This does not fit me. Then some friends told me on a lazy stupid godless that there is a blog by the designer. And uh, let me look up who the designer is because of course I printed it out. The designer is Lana Holden. And here is also a other picture where you can see how funky that heel is. Um, so yeah, the designer has a few issues mentioned in her blog so you can easily fix that um, in my case it was add extra stitches on the salt side and have a few more stitches in the heel so i tried that nope still doesn't fit this bit still is not stretchy enough um, like doesn't have stretch at all super super tight and uh, yeah this sock is not for me and it is going to the frog pond. It is only still like this because I wanted to show it to you. Uh, so yeah, I knit them on 2.5 millimeter needles, high high sharps. What I will do if I try it next time is sport weight yarn and a 2.75 or 3 millimeter needle. Um, so I have a bit looser fabric maybe with the 72 stitches um, since it is all skewed um, yeah it just isn't 72 stitches is just 
too narrow for me so I have to go up needle sizes go thicker yarn and um, see if that helps done gonna be shrugged so in my exploding tardis project bag from all about yarn I now have a different project than those skew socks in here I have the other half of the yarn um, because this is Regia Perfect, uh, the rainbow version. Here is how it looks, and um, yeah, here we are. I just took the needle out, cast on a different project with the second ball. I split it when winding because I thought that would be easier. So, yeah. I have a cuff and I have a bit of the leg done. And this is going to be Vanilla is the New Black. And I have to look up the designer because I forgot to look it up before recording. Because that's the kind of professional I am. You would think after 150 times of doing this, I would have at least gotten a hang of that. It is by Anne Fletcher, or Anne, um, Anne with an H behind it. And basically this is a vanilla sock, but with a special heel. And the heel is in the back and is in a triangle. And I'm very intrigued by that and I have to learn a heel that looks a bit like that or practice heels that look a bit like that for my idea for the socks with the parquetry Katri mitts. Parquetry. Parquetry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, bit giddy. I was hoping to record outside but two doors down is totally redoing their garden today and they have been making noise all day long like putting the pavement into a metal uh, wheelbarrow and they don't do that quietly and then they have a skip in front of the house to throw it in yeah. my mood is pretty pretty low when it comes to noise, so oh well, <laughs> I thought I would cheer my up, myself up with uh, putting on lipstick and recording a podcast for you, which is definitely helping. Um, but the noise isn't. So um, and I'm knitting this on high high sharps, two and a half millimeter, and yeah, I can't wait until I'm at the heel to try that and. Uh, We'll see how it goes. I hope my idea that I have, that I can substitute, um, no, that I can make it into the thing that I want for the sock that I'm gonna make. I think it's time for another sip of water. And then, this is the only whip I have worked on because this is not the only rainbow whip I have, but the only one that really clicked. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you. I did work on uh, the project in this bag for two rounds, so just for the complete story. I was working on my broken seat stitch socks to see if it would work, and it didn't, so cast on that vanilla is the new black sock broken seat stitch uh, socks are also in my projects and the designer of this one is Hannah Levaniemi and I think it is a free pattern yes it is uh, it's a pretty simple pattern um, two out of four rows are just Plain knitting and the other two are knit one, purl one, or purl one, knit one. So, super easy. The yarn I'm using for this, Undercover Otter, uh, 
it's not clown barf, but it's killer clowns from outer space on slasher sock 2.0 so here is the card and the cover water and the other one is invict schreepjes invicta glamour or glamour but um Basically, it is undyed yarn with a teeny tiny bit of iridescent sparkle in it. Also knitting them on high high sharps, two and a half millimeter, because that's my absolute favorite. And this is already the second sock, but I was knitting on it and I was like, no, my fingers don't want to do that. Um, I had some eczema on my fingers and it was just cracked all the way to bleeding and this is a sturdy sock yarn. Everything I'm knitting with rainbows is sturdy and I couldn't handle that feeling. So I just sat there for a few hours and didn't do anything. I was very, very happy that the next day <laughs> at least the crack healed a bit so I could knit again. Um, so yeah, this one just, it will finish when it will finish, but not at the moment. Yeah. Those are my whips. Um, it's not the most, but, and still we're here, 22 minutes in. But we do have acquisitions because apparently I completely forgot last time that I had acquisitions. I only had one and it wasn't much, but it was by my favorite bead shop, Virvar Kralen. And yeah, they are awesome. And I got two bags of beads. Um, they are split up in Toho and the other big name in small beads, seed beads. I don't remember the name, sorry. There's two really good brands, Toho and another one, uh, Miyuki, that's it. Um, because I was looking for beads to go with my cashmere yarn from Italy, from Lella Bella. I think I said Lello Bello, but it is Lella Bella. Um, and these are the three that I like best for it. So it's probably going to be the middle one. So I think I like this one best. I just have to buy it in the right amount. I think I need three or four baggies of it. Uh, I kept them separate from the rest. I just ordered a whole shitload of seed beads for color picking because on the website it was so difficult to see. So I had, well, these I didn't buy for the shawl or for the yarn. <laughs> these I just bought because I liked them a lot. Um, they're basically my favorite yarn ever, or colorway basically. Uh, Screaming Satsuma by Undercover Otter in seed bead form. So maybe I need a sock pattern in that color with these beads, but I doubt they will pop on the yarn. They would be incognito, so maybe just on some solid dark color or something. Um, they're called Luminous Flamingo, which I think is very appropriate. For the rest, I have gold and like coppery bronze colors. I just bought a whole lot to try what goes well with red. And now that I have picked my, yarn, my beads, I just have to order a few extra and... Uh, I'm good to go with my beautiful shawl with beads. So that was the acquisition I totally forgot about last time. But this time I have a few acquisitions, being two. Um, and the first one is a prize I won on Instagram. Um, there is a new audio podcast for yarny stuff in the Netherlands, which is called In Het Vol Atelier. 
it is by four ladies and um, one of them has a store in Tilburg um, which is called In Het Wol Atelier I think or Het Wol Atelier um, they talk about yarn and fiber spinning, knitting, crochet uh, interesting things like um, yeah, what happens in a yarn store like those <laughs> funny little stories that uh, the things that happen in a yarn store and um, so they always have one of those or every other week or every episode I think um, the episodes come every other week and it was very nice to have that as company while being in the waiting room in the hospital so um, I shared something on Instagram about them and apparently they were having a giveaway that I totally missed so it was very nice to see my name suddenly. And I have won the newest copy of Elaine magazine. Lene. I'm still not sure how you pronounce it. And I'm not the only one. And they also added two stitch markers. First one being Knitting Queen. Let me see. Does that work? Knitting Queen. And the other one is yarn mm, yeah you can guess how it looks um i am not usually the biggest fan of lane um i have found a very cute pattern that i did like um the reason i didn't like lane that much is because they were quite uh late with size inclusivity and yeah i'm just I hold a grudge for things like that and there's a lot of things in here that I would never make uh, but here is one that does look really cute socks with ice cream I think that's cute and um, this one I also like I will have to look up the names but maybe not in fluff yarn and maybe not with the extra stuff on there but with the beads on the sleeve i think it looks so cute um let me find it in the pattern what it's called because of course why it's called liberty by pope vergara um, page 60 to 63 there is page numbering. There. Let me do. See, the beads are also in the neckline. And even though the neckline is quite high, I am interested. Oh, no, it actually. Yeah, it depends on which photo you look at. Here it looks like it has a decent neckline shaping. But here it looks like she's choking in the neckline. I really dislike it when it is the same front and back. So you get... I just don't like that. Um, but yeah. This is with fluff garn, uh, yarn. Uh, let's find out what it is. Going the wrong way. Like I said, I'm very prepared. Not. It is knit with a skein of Marina uh, by Manas de Uruguay and a skein of Silk Mohair by Isager. And you hold the yarn double. So yeah, it's basically two skeins of silk at the same time. Um, making it pro, yeah, basically a fingering. Yeah. And does it say how many beads you need? No, it. Yeah, it does. About two hundred. Toho in gold. Guess what I have just bought? 
I know I have it. There are six odd. I do have six and eight odd. So, um, yeah. This might be one that I would knit. And here is uh, a flyer for the Dutchies. Um, you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook and look for In Het Wol Atelier. There are four yarny friends. This is the logo, so if you see that, you know you're correct. It is a yarn podcast for all thread bloggers. That doesn't really translate into English well. Um, so yeah, that is that. So just to uh, add, I, I won it, so I got it for free and it was gifted to me. Um, but yeah, there's no real sponsoring going on here. Um, then I have a box of yarn. I ordered from Lana Filia, the lovely Kaya. Uh, this is her card. She also has a podcast, Voll Inspirationen. It's a German audio podcast and um, Kaya is just lovely. She isn't that far from me. I think about 30 to 45 minutes drive and we have been trying to meet up but it just, it was too busy and crazy and everything for both of us. So I decided to order yarn because there's going to be a West Knits Sock Mystery Knitable. The Secret Sock Along, I think it is called. Summer Secret Sock Along, Summer Sock Along, whatever. It starts July 6th and there were beautiful combinations of yarn in kits available. And I was like, yeah, not gonna happen. I was too late anyways. And what was left was definitely not my taste. and. Later, I found out that the yarn was a high twist merino. Well, high twist is good, but just merino uh, makes me wonder if that is good enough to knit socks. Um, I've heard plenty of stories about people who say high twist merino, perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, it can work and it can be absolutely shitty and wear it once and <laughs> fall apart. So um, hopefully those who have a kit, uh, know that in advance before they start knitting and I really hope newbie knitters will not be put off by wearing through their socks really quickly. I mean my first socks were like bulletproof and oppo yarn and uh, yeah they are still alive. So but one of the things that was in the kits was life in the long grass and i have been lusting over getting life in the long grass yarn for ages and kaya sells it um so i was like yeah i'm gonna order with kaya and i have the sock yarn so the fine sock by life in the long grass which is um almost the same as my smooth sock it's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon and it feels basically the same. So here we are with my two colors for the Stephen West or West Knits SSAL. I think they will be amazing. This is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. And this is jewel right way around and it is a tiny bit bluer on screen than it is in real life since I couldn't really pick uh, from the screen which color I would take with the speckled yarn I also got this one which is also a beautiful petrol um, it's a bit darker and it has a bit more variegated bits in it here is like a brownish coppery splatter on it. There is a bit of a lighter patch. Um, this one is called Sfaria. And when it came, I knew exactly that it 
going to be these two and this one is for my stash because I have lack on semi-solid colors. My stash looks mostly like this speckles, lots of color explosion going on. And um, that makes it difficult for things like Super Sock World Championship or even Sock Madness or just in general to combine my hand dyed stash with things for bigger projects. So most of them are single skeins. So I hope this one will make a good match with something in there. It's one of my favorite colors. So here you can see a bit when they go next to each other. This one is darker in real life. And yeah, this one may be almost correct. So thank you very much Kaya for the quick delivery. Um, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I still look forward to meeting you in real life and visiting you. Um, those were my acquisitions and everything else. So shop news is fairly the same. The shop is still fully stocked and it's way too hot to go and die in my studio. I hope to try out some things soon, but we'll have to wait and see what hospital appointments will be. Ro um, Let's go and say goodbye to everyone who doesn't want to hear the personal talk, spoiler content. Um, there will be talk about uh, content warning. There will be talk about cancer and treatments for it. Um, so yeah, everyone who doesn't want to hear it, I totally understand. I hope to see you back next time. Bye bye. And for everyone still watching, thank you for sticking around. And for hearing me. Um, Robert had his radiation treatments the past two weeks so um, as far as we know everything went well. He survived, I survived, it was a heat wave here so it wasn't the best moment. Um, sometimes we had to go at 2 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon and then it would be 30 degrees and we had to bike there and ugh. yeah no fun but we survived all is well um he's okay he was a bit tired but that's also the heat um we didn't sleep very well we woke up way too early and we couldn't sleep early in the evening already because it was just way too warm in our bedroom that's what you get in summer it happens it is fine it was just and, and, and that made us both like, I'm too tired to do anything. Um, what else? Yeah, soon there will be new scans that will be halfway through July. I think there's like 10 days, like first his PET scan, then the MRI, and then the results over the course of 10 days in the middle of the month of July. And We'll see. We can't. Like Robert is feeling well, but he was feeling quite okay when we first discovered it. He just that he got really sick at that time. But before that, we didn't expect this. So I'm always a bit careful um, with being too happy going into the scans. And also trying not to see the whole doom scenario. So I'm just trying to be a bit neutral and hope for the best. Um, he's got his driver's license again. So that is very good news. And all we can hope it will last longer than three weeks. So please keep your fingers crossed for us. And uh, send us a little bit of mojo for it. Um, because that would mean that we could have trips further away than my comfort zone. I know my comfort zone is really a lot bigger nowadays, but I still am not comfortable driving to Amsterdam and those areas. So, 
with that, I think I have it all. I'm okay, by the way. I'm just tired. And I'm just taking my time. So, recording a podcast, knitting a bit, doing my admin, and that kind of stuff. So, keeping the household going. Just the regular stuff without working. Um, right. I will see you again soon, I hope. And until then, bye-bye.